Stagnation. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Brazen. Your hey boy Double O. Yes, sir. So today we're going to be talking about something very interesting. Something that is, I think, this is really the number one rule in the uh, uh, in the in the in the crypto space, and especially for Bitcoin. Right? We're going to be talking about self custody and centralized exchanges. Mm. You know, the biggest thing that uh, Bitcoin. Uh, brings to the table is that decentralization right that is something that has just not been uh i mean it's, hap it's been there before in the past but having it in the modern age has been you know it's something that's been shaking up the wall to say the least can so you, can you can you quickly tell people what decentralization means so decentralization essentially is being at this point where things are not controlled from a central entity so eliminating a central point of failure Mm. right to put it that way uh, this way there is there is the ability to interact without trust without third parties without uh, the banks without saying banks that they, exactly saying that they're holding on to your money for you <laughs> exactly <laughs> but it is you know I mean I think I think this you know reduces things like corruption all right mm -hmm. manipulation I'm saying thing else corruption and things like that inflation and deflation of your money exactly now Obviously, uh, <laughs> and especially speaking for Bitcoin here, it's been turning the world upside down, essentially. Yeah. It's been shaking up governments across the world, right? Mm. Just a few lines of codes, man. What are they worried about, man? They have, they have armies, dude. Can they just, yeah. can they just fix it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, we're now in this situation where things are changing. We, we And we've said this before, uh, uh, Kenny. We said, you know, there's going to be a battle ahead of us with this thing. Obviously, we do not expect that um, with decentralization and Bitcoin, that governments are just going to lay down and just hand over the reins, right? So yeah. this is this is what they're doing now. They're fighting for this, and that's what we'll be talking about here. Yeah. What do you think so far? What do you think of what I've exp explained that? Does that make sense so far? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we know this is March. The month right. of March, we knew this was coming. Uh, we need to expect this. This is minus the so-called uh, interest rate increase that's also coming up next week as mm -hmm. well. So that's Absolutely. another thing that could impact the cryptocurrency space heavily. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we knew to expect this. This is normal. Uh, the current folks in power are not going to, like yeah. you just said, they're not just going to accept this new technology that Absolutely. aims to displace them. But as we all know, technology, just like the internet and the Windows operating system, have made a huge impact in the way we, in the, in the way we live our lives. Yeah, and yeah, that's one advantage of technology yeah. and learning how to code. So now we have this technology, this programming language, this code that comes out and right. changes the face of money, money as we know it. And of course, governments rules and an old power with money. King Solomon said money is everything, really. Is All your energy, everything that you work for every day, if it doesn't create money for you to transact in life, then yeah. you're screwed. So, of course, now we have the executive order from the United States government coming out yes. this week that is supposed to regulate your, your, your ability to supposedly escape the centralized control. The centralized of, system. Yeah, of exactly. your money. And well, let me let me let me uh, drop the article here, and we're going to take a little bit of a, a dive into this one here because I think yeah. it is interesting uh, the approach uh, that the government is taking with this one here. So we have this article here, and it reads: Biden planning to sign an executive order on crypto this week, right? Uh, so essentially, the White House has been coordinating on has been working on coordinating the efforts of different federal agencies since last year. This is interesting because, you know, I think there was like uh, an FBI unit for crypto now. Yep, FBI, like IRS, and on, on uh, security, all the good stuff. Absolutely. And I had a question which I asked you, and I'm going to ask the same question after I read this first line here. You're so you about to put me on the spot. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a question for the audience, right? Because maybe I'm misunderstanding it, right? Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Maybe I'm missing a couple of things, but uh, it'd be interesting to see everyone's response. Please comment down below. 
So the other will direct agencies to consider potential regulatory changes in addition to national security and economic implications of cryptocurrencies, according to Bloomberg, right? It's also mentioned in the article that the White House has been receiving pressure to make these changes because um, of the whole situation with Russia and, and you know, the, the possibility that uh, people may use uh, cryptocurrencies as a means to get around sanctions. And they don't want that, right? So it's two things that I would ask, and and for anyone who, you know, is out there, maybe there's an extensive list of, of Bitcoin laws, maybe, right? Um, but the thing is, it seems that there is a uh, there is a level of excitement to regulate or to enforce, right? bad behavior or I guess punish bad behavior right to enforce mm -hmm. I guess I, I'm, I cannot finish the word enforce because I don't know what the regulations are for cryptocurrency yet there is no clear you know regulations you know like if you see stocks you can go read about what a security is yeah. Yeah. and all of those kind of things you see that the SEC is involved with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency um, what are the rules right now and what is it exactly that they will be enforcing you know well go ahead, number one on. executive order is not a law you know you still gotta go through the, the judiciary system to fully enforce the law so no, the executive true. order is the president saying i recommend that you guys do this so right. there's a big chance that some offices will maybe do some positive things and some negative things that will impact the general public uh the another thing is the angle at which they're looking at it as we all know is right. are they looking to investigate folks that are using it for nefarious means or are they using mm -hmm. it to stop all the corruption in the crypto space which we know exists in the altcoin space um, <laughs> it does exist in the altcoin space majorly i don't know it's terrible and like, the more you dig into DeFi, <laughs> there's some terrible things yeah. out there that, that damn, just, now i'm thinking about it and i want to take back my question uh yeah, you know, in the altcoin space, there's definitely some horrible stuff going on. Yeah, um, now, yeah. uh, the the second, st the second, but here's the thing: I would also say, um, would it not make sense, given that they're aware of the, I'm sh pretty sure they're aware of everything that's going on in the altcoin space. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not really decentralized to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. This is a controlled space. So, I guess I'll say then, given that we are all aware of what is happening in that space, would it not make sense then to start drafting regulation and having discussions about it I, I think instead of instead of sending the force first then regulate so that's where the crypto space need to have unity instead of competing with one another so you yeah. have coinbase telling on everybody which oh. is a big issue bro, how, many times, is bro how many times have i said to you bro that if coinbase is going to betray the community man I think Coinbase is Judas Ooh, of crypto. Of crypto, yes. There we uh, go. You, you won't be lying. I need to get all my stuff off of that thing. I've done it before, but right. I got back because it's the easiest way for me to get access to these coins. Yeah, um, so that, that's that. And then we have yeah. people saying decentralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges. But then we had the recent issue with MetaMask uh, yeah. shutting down some crypto. Uh, that took me by surprise. And of course, Coinbase, given the list of all everybody's crypto people that have crypto to the federal government so the list gets even more complicated and you yeah. have uh, Binance with their own little issues going on over there uh, so the challenges continue to exist is that okay decentralized what's really decentralized and right. the more you read into it you realize that Bitcoin is the only decentralized cryptocurrency out there the rest yeah. of them have a centralized control Absolutely. We had the recent news of what happened to the DeFi space with some major programmers leaving, and we have Phantom and all these other uh, DeFi uh, coins in other spaces, in other altcoin spaces, just yeah. crashing because of one person leaves. Absolutely. You don't have that case with Bitcoin. And now adding the complications of the federal government regulations on that, it mm. even gets a lot more troubling. Absolutely. It's just a and fact. You know, this is an interesting thing, and I'm just going to touch back because you mentioned about Coinbase uh, kind of pretty much just snitching on everyone there, and I just wanted yeah. to touch on this. Uh, we have in this article here, obviously we have uh, Switzerland, first of all, trying to put some pressure on uh, on, on uh, cryptocurrency wallets mm -hmm. that are based in Russia. 
How do they know it's based in Russia? Obviously, it's because those coins are on an exchange, a centralized yeah. exchange like Coinbase. Yeah, it's and called a public ledger, right? Exactly. And we have Coinbase. And the reason we say Coinbase is going to betray the community is because in many occasions, we've seen that a situation arises and other exchanges are not like rushing to, to be the first in line. But Coinbase is reaching out to the government, right? Uh, offering up people's information and things like this. So we have this this this, this part here, which really shook me. Uh, Coinbase has recently blocked 25,000 Russian addresses linked to illicit activities. I mean, uh, we could say that is fraud because how do we know it's illicit activities, right? Uh, the company has reviewed the list of crypto holders to the US government asking for sanction enforcement support. Yeah, so the the interesting thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency within this whole Ukraine-Russian situation is that you right. can say good is fighting evil, so good is allowed to hold their crypto, right. or you can donate your crypto, but then you have evil, well, I don't want to call Russia evil, Russia also has its own reason for doing what they're doing, but yeah. what their, their current action can be defined as evil. Um, oh, snap, bro. You better condemn them all. You know that modern society, if you don't take one side, they will come after you like this. I just said, <laughs> their, their current action <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Go ahead, evil. bro. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going. over here protecting I'm, I'm, I'm Russia. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Carry on. But, but, but that said, what says that the action that they're taking against the Russian oligarchs, if they can do that to the Russian oligarchs, yeah. what says that they cannot do that to the middle class, to the lower class? Which is what they've been trying to do with DeFi lately. They're trying yeah. to change the definition of uh, definition of uh, accredited this. investor, the amount of money you can stake, and all that interesting stuff because it's again uh, proof of proof of stake, not proof of work. Yeah. So that becomes all the all these other complications are coming into the space, kind of like what the bank did with the regulations, where it's very hard for lower and middle class to come up and have big investment opportunities. They are trying to do the same thing with this new technology, which is now trying to limit what people like you and I can do in the space, which is their current goal. So we got to work to fix that. Uh, but it will require the crypto space to come together to unite on uh, on what they want the future of crypto currency uh, space to look like. Kind of yeah. like what they did with the internet back in the day when yeah. they have the uh, OSI model and created all, created all the standards for the internet. We need yeah. a standard that works for everybody, but then removes all these freaking uh, stupid altcoins out there. Well, I, w- I will say this, Double O. Uh, when it comes to coming together and having a a, uh, a standard, right, which everyone can operate on, I think we already have that. You know, the Bitcoin standard. Right. Yeah. I think what needs to I also I also think what needs to happen the most and. Coming together, as you said, is a very important point, and I'm going to definitely touch on that as well. Um, but I think before we even come together, right, the first thing is people need to educate themselves. The interesting thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is the fact that it's not exactly the easiest thing to just pick up, right? Um, I, I, from on I the first dropped go. that off cryptocurrency class. That was how hard that class was. That yeah, class hard. But, but this is the thing. Understanding Bitcoin is not as difficult as taking in a class. You know what I mean? Understanding Bitcoin is just more so uh, uh, taking the time out to just open your mind, to just, just I think, just just let it happen, right? I think one thing that happens all too often is that people are uh, having a difficult time releasing the traditional system from their mind. Like, you know, this is what they were born with. This is all they've known. And so mm-hmm. it's like you're telling someone to forget your brain. Yeah. It's, it's you know what I mean it's kind of difficult to happen, and so I think it, the the first part really to make the wheels really start turning is yeah. to really start questioning the 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 traditional system, right? What you yeah. already know and what are the issues in it, then once you do that and just really just keep an open mind and then look at Bitcoin, not necessarily for it to convince you, but just look at what it is and compare it. I think that that hap- needs to happen for so many people. Yeah, I, I would basically just repeat what you said. Right. Ask questions. Just ask questions. The fact, the fact that it is what it is now does not mean that it's, it's been what it's always been, right? Absolutely. If the federal government can seize gold and say that you're not allowed to hold gold, 
just so that you can just use paper money and then turn mm-hmm. around and then re- re- legalize gold, then start thinking, then sell okay, it back. so this Bitcoin thing, um, let me ask more questions. Ask more questions and you realize that there's something wrong with the system and maybe this thing here was mm-hmm. created, you know, to solve the problem. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing. We're, we're going to just talk about, um, as, we, as we come to wrap it up here, we'll talk about what people can do given the situation that we're in right now, right? We see it in Canada, people's mm-hmm. accounts getting frozen. Uh, we're seeing everything that's going on in Russia right now and, of course, Switzerland. Um, where else? Uh, I mean, it could just keep going on and on. Oh, dang, dude, that's the ledger. We're doing that after this. Keep talking, <laughs> right? keep talking, keep talking. Keep talking. So um, we we see that happening in all these countries where the government is able to now just uh, really invade people's privacy um, and freeze their money, take control of their their investments, really, right? Mm-hmm. What is what is their property? There's, that's what I'm looking for. They take control of their properties. Seizure but property. We all have the right to protect ourselves from uh, such behaviors. I mean, this is these are things that are in the in the uh, in the uh, U.S. Constitution, right? The freedom to protect yourself, the freedom to assembly, speech, right, all that good stuff, which applies for things like Bitcoin. And yeah. so, by governments trying to, I think they need to be very cautious with how they approach the situation because they could be violating all of those. Uh, Can they just do that? They right? just basically invaded people's privacy by seizing or blocking access to people's bank account. Yeah, because absolutely. They donated. I don't care what the truckers are doing, but if they say this is their freedom, then hey, it says it in your regulations. But yeah, they the have whole. the right. They have the right to do that. So it is. It is. It is. It's something that you just need to. We all need to be able to coexist. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it might be. It might be a security issue now that I've told people that Ledger, uh, Ledger Nano X is a solution. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> now they well, can come after this one, <laughs> but again, it's not on here. This is just a tool. It's yeah. in the public ledger, so don't <laughs> ever worry about that. <laughs> you can't touch it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, that's and and you know, the biggest thing is like like Ken is mentioning there with the ledger, um, self custody, right? Yeah. Taking storage of your own coins, not storing it on Coinbase or whatever else exchange is there. Getting those coins to a place where you have full control of where your funds are, um, mm-hmm. you know there are also other st- self custody uh, wallets. What do you have out there, uh, Double O? Is that the Ledger Nano X? Yes, sir. Yeah, Takes that's that will be that will be a cold storage wallet there, ladies and gentlemen. For those who are not familiar yet, so you could use a cold storage <laughs> wallet. You could use a uh, there self. There are also self custody wallets, which are several others. This uh, is the easiest yeah. one, though I think to use, most popular. E- yeah, I mean it's it's definitely up there. It's definitely one of those ones up there. I also use Blue Wallet, which yeah, you know, it's self custody, but it is a hot wallet. So it's one of those things. I think it's just Im- important to one, uh, get your coins off the exchanges. That way, your assets are protected and can be frozen and all of that kind of stuff. And then I think from there, you really start realizing the true, well, before even before then, you start realizing the true benefits of yeah. of having control of your own assets. So. Yeah. That's all I have. Double O. Any final thoughts, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would just also add that, you know, outside of just putting it in these altcoins, uh, I mean, in this wallet, uh, putting in these wallets, right. people want to make uh, money off of uh, uh, staking their coins. So mm. there are solutions out there that allow you to still have your investments in a hard wallet and still stake it. Uh, yeah. We can do some research and give you some info on that. But, you know, mm. If you want to make some residual money while the markets are down, nothing is stopping you from doing that, even with your hard wallet. Absolutely. Well, I I, I, I hear you on that, man. I think that that is definitely because I think they just recently uh, enabled staking for the Ledger Nano. So yeah, for the old coiners, definitely uh, something that works out. So there we go. Well, that will be all we have for this one, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Do not forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, Stackfin. We're in there, right? And until next time, brazen out. Double up.